Good morning. Good morning. It's Sunday. It's the 18th of July, and we are together to worship the Lord. We are so happy you're here, and I am thrilled to be up here and see all of you again. May you, God bless the service. Amen. stand and join me in the responsive reading. For us, there is only one God and Father from whom streams all creation and for whom we exist. Praise God. We give thanks to God with our whole heart. And we have one Master through whom all things are made new and for whom we exist. 
will give praise among fellow believers. We'll join with the congregation. And we have one Holy Spirit by whom the church is serviced and for whom we exist. Great are the works of our tribunal God. To be our Lord, in fear of the Lord is the beginning of the world. May our praise go on forever in the Master's name. Amen. Please join us now in the hymn, My Hope is Built, on page 368. children in the um, congregation it's now to leave time to leave for Sunday school and uh, this is going to take you but I think we're all big kids here <laughs> but anyway uh, we'll move on now to our, our mission and ministries and uh, the first one is uh, today at 5 to 6 30 in Cheryl Hall the evangelism team will be having uh, training and that training will to train uh, volunteers to go out to our neighbors to build up relationship with them and to find out what they want from our church. Our CAUMC online services will continue to be available online as soon as possible after the service. So let's keep our fingers crossed today that our electronics will work and we can get things running smoothly for those that are uh, at home and uh, but still willing to worship with us. Um, rummage sale is coming uh, and wrap on. Our rummage sale is going to be the 13th, August 13th from 9 until 5 and August 14th from 9 until 2. If you have any items to donate, please give Sandy uh, Blazer a call and we will be having our uh, raffle tickets um, on sale today after the service and Harriet will be taking care of that. Uh, there is a flyer, a yellow flyer in the bulletin that's telling you uh, about those that, uh, companies that are offering uh, services for the raffle tickets. So uh, consider buying a couple. That would be really 
really helpful. Uh, meditation volunteers are needed. Our Unshakable Hope group has a weekly meditation. Uh, volunteers are needed to share a meditation on a Bible verse. And if you are interested, please contact Pastor Lee. And I think that's still doing on Zoom, right? Yeah. Um, share food pantry. We need um, fresh produce, uh, mac and cheese, peanut butter, and canned fruit and veggies. So uh, when you're going to the store, uh, pick up a couple of extra items and uh, bring them down to the church for a share. They're sorely needed for that. And our beautiful altar flowers this morning are really nice, but if you would like to uh, donate um, some real flowers for a special occasion, um, uh, pick up um, and pick them up after the service. Contact uh, Jan, Mor Jan Karpoff and uh, Robin Morgan, and they will be glad to uh, sign you up. Okay, buy a shingle, support the church. Um, if you are so moved, please donate money for the sanctuary roof. Um, we're, we're slowly getting there, but uh, just keep in mind if you have a celebration or a um, uh, a memory, a, a memorial for someone that you care about, maybe giving a little extra money for the roof fund would be uh, a wonderful way to honor them. And now we will have the choir uh, do Gentle Spirit Dwell With Me. is okay. Uh, the scripture this morning is from Psalm 111 verses 1 through 10. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. 
He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We will now uh, join us singing Out of the Depths. Many of us are serving our church sacrificially. Yesterday, when the United Methodist woman asked our church members to come to pick up some of the furniture, 18 people showed up during this pandemic. 18 young people showed up to move sofas and beds and everything, and we had fun time delivering those furniture to church for the rummage sale in August as United Methodist Church chair. Why people do that? Because it is fun and it is good. However, there are some spiritual principles. I call it SUV because people know the SUV. They love SUV, sports utility vehicles, right? So I call it SUV to memorize it. As in the serve, we serve other people with love. You means use time, talent, and treasure. And we use them sacrificially. Then, here is the promise of God. Victory in Jesus will be given to us. Souls plant the seed for harvest. That's why we serve others and use our time and talent and treasures. Because we know that there is a victory in Jesus. So even though it was fun, it is also good for all of us. And the psalm, psalm is the vows to praise God in public because God is faithful in keeping those spiritual principles like SUV. Praise the Lord. I give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. So we praise God, not only alone, individually, but we praise God in congregation. Why? One of the reasons, there are many reasons, but one of the reasons that he clearly states why he praised God is this. Great are the works of the Lord, started by all who delight in them. God's faithfulness is proven by his wonderful deeds. 
like remember the accident or manna and quail when in doubt remember God's deeds one of the wonderful deeds is the provision of our daily bread manna and quail were provided as well as springs of water in the wilderness whenever people say we have no water then God says strike the rock or command to the rock and the water gushed out from the rocks and people say I want to eat some meat and God provide quails and people say we are hungry and God provide the manna for 40 years without interruption every day the psalmist says he provides food for those who fear him he is ever mindful of his covenant God made a covenant with people of God and then God has been faithful to the covenant all the time and one of that is that I will protect you and I'll give you whatever you need not whatever we desire but whatever we need God will provide us so Jesus asked us to pray for daily food because that's what we need but do not pray for chocolate ice cream you don't need that you maybe you desire for it. you like it yes so so God promised to provide something that we need and God is mindful of it is promised and the psalmist says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom we already saw this word of fear twice all those who practice it have a good understanding then what is the fear what is the fear of the Lord in Hebrew is irat Adonai irat Adonai is not that oh I'm scared it's about respect it's like all so God I'm in all of you I respect you I know that you have great power but you use the power only for my benefit not to destroy me that's the kind of fear I served the Korean army and when I was a soldier there were like two star, three star came by. And I was in awe, right? I, I couldn't move, I stand still, right? And the general, two stars, came to me and said, It's okay, private Lee. It's okay, relax. Talk to me. Yes, sir! <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot say yes. Because I know he has power to do anything. And I, even though he says, this is okay, just relax. So what do you need? What can I do for you? Nothing, sir. You know, I, I, I had the fear of him. He's a very generous, kind person and he will use his power only for the benefit of all the soldiers but you cannot just say oh he's like my friend right yeah those who serve the military they know what it is what's the relationship Same, it's not like that but still we can say to God God is totally different than human beings God is all powerful but God is our Father, God is our Shepherd, God cares for us, and Jesus even said, I'm your friend. Do not call me a master, I'm your friend. And we even sing that Jesus is my friend. So you can say, oh, Jesus is my friend, I can just play with him. It's not that kind of relationship. Even though Jesus is my friend, Jesus is also my Lord and my Master. So many times we forget this God is the master and creator and we have to fear him. When you commit to sin, you have to know the consequences. God can send any kind of punishment. However, 
out of his love, God sent his only begotten son who died for our sins to forgive us and have a new chance. We are so grateful. However, that does not mean that God cannot punish us. So that's the kind of fear that we have. When Jesus had the three temptations before his public ministry, if you read the Matthew Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, there is a detailed description of his temptation. Jesus showed us how to defeat those temptations. If I summarize it in one word, fear of God. When you worship God, you can defeat the temptations. So many people, politicians or big leaders of society, they fell. And we heard all those news about the demise of famous people, actors, actresses, or political leaders, sometimes pastors. They fell into temptation. But Jesus had this attitude, not my will, but thy will be done. Even though I am your son, I will honor you, Father. None my will, but thy will be done. So when Satan comes to Jesus, the first temptation, why don't you make this stone into bread and eat it? You fast for 40 days. How many days have you fasted? Maximum, three days, one week? 15 days, I don't know how many days I've done. But when I did one week fasting prayer, after three days, I just want to eat something. Everything looks like delicious. So I, I can even eat all those cockroaches around the room. So, 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 so but I know it's gross, right? Yeah, but when you are hungry, when you starve to death like a fast after one week, maybe you can even eat anything that's around you. So after 40 days, Satan said, you are hungry, right? This stone looks like bread. Why don't you turn it into the bread? You have that power. And Jesus said, no. People live not by bread alone, but by the word of mouth of God. What does that mean? We are not just depending on the material goods for our life. We need to listen to the word of God. We have to depend on God's word. Otherwise, people in rich mansions, people who have millions and millions of dollars, they commit suicide. Why? Because they have this hunger, desperation, or some kind of frustration. They cannot handle this. They cannot handle their lives anymore. You know, Mr. Epstein, he committed suicide in prison. He had all the money that he can, cannot even use. But he fell into temptation. And he ended his life in prison as a criminal. Why? Because he tried to turn the stone into bread. So Jesus said, honor God's natural law. To get a bread, you have to go out to the field. You have to plant the seed. You have to work all year. You have to weed out all those bad veg vegetation. And you have to take care of the crops. And then in the fall, you can have a harvest. Then you can bring the grains and make a dough and take time to make the dough into bread. That's how you eat the bread. Do not just try to make it like quick success. Many people try to have quick success thinking that, oh, if I buy a lottery, maybe I can get a million dollars soon and become a rich millionaire. No, 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 no. Those are the temptations. And how do you know that that's the temptation? When you honor God, when you fear God, you know that that's the temptation. No, that doesn't work. God fearing, God honoring people loves work. 
We work hard to earn the money, to put the bread on the table. We don't want to just hand out and uh, give me money. Either to the government or to God, we want to work hard as long as we can. And if we cannot work anymore, then the society and community has to take care of its members. That's why we have social security systems. So both ends, those who can work, work. Those who cannot work because of age or handicap, the community take care of them together. So in that way, we work together and live together. However, the basic principle is that you have to work hard. Do not expect miracles. And trust God's covenant. You don't need to test God. The Satan says, okay, you are the son of God. Why don't you just jump from the cliff? Angels will just take care of you. You are not going to be harmed. I know. However, I don't want to do that. Why do I trust, test God? I already know that God loves me. But in critical conditions, sometimes you feel that way. I, I wonder whether God loves me or not. You know, the two major questions that the people of God had in wilderness, first question was this, is God willing to save us? Second question is, is God able to save us? Because of their conditions and hardship, the people keep asking, is God able to give us? Food, yeah, God was able to give a manna, cane, water. God was able to depart the Red Sea. God was able to do anything. Then why we are still having these, these difficulties? Is God willing to save us? And many times the people test God. When we are in the hospital bed, when we lost our job, when we experience divorce, when we go through difficulties in life, many times we ask this question, is God willing to save me? God, are you still there? Oh Lord my God, why am I going through these difficulties? Why I am having this pain in my life? Why did you take away my wife? I cannot trust you anymore. Are you listening to God? I'm crying out from this pit and you are quiet, you are silent. How long? We have read the Psalms for many days, but one third of the Psalms are like this. So we know that people cry out like this. God, can I trust you? Are you still listening to me? Are you still with me? How long can I trust you? And people want to jump off from the cliff to see if God loves me. But Jesus said, oh, I am not going to jump off the cliff because I already know that my father loves me. I have no doubt about it. God loves me. How do I know? Because the Bible says so. I have a fear of God. I read the Bible. I learned from my youth till now that God loves me. I know I'm a sinner, but God saved me. I know I don't deserve this life, but God saved my life. And God gave me second time, third chance, fourth chance. Without God's grace, I cannot stay here. So I know God loves me. I don't have to jump from the cliff to see if God loves me. And Satan says, fine. Then just bow down to me. I'll give you this whole world. Can't you see the glory of the world? I can give it to you all. And so many people fell into this trap. They bow down to Satan and they try to get the money, fame, and power. How many people sold their soul to Satan to get the talent that they want? How many people sold their soul to get the position that they want? 
They all fell into this temptation, but Jesus said, Go away. Worship God alone. Worship God alone. <coughs> the Bible says, Worship God. Do not worship the world. So anybody who fear God will save themselves and serve others with love in action. The psalmist says he has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nation. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. So, God shows the trustworthy of his precepts by the power of his word, and so do we. That's why we want to serve others, and we try to repurpose in our church campus. That is one of the ways to show our fear of God to our neighbors. Because we are not just the people who gather together in a sanctuary, to serve our own needs. We want to go out to the community and to serve their needs. So tonight, this evening, we are going to have evangelism training, but evangelism training basically means we first want to know what other people need in our community. Do they need some place to stay, some food to eat? Do they need quality time with other people? What do you need? So I would say it would be three R, relationship, relationship building. And second R means a restoration of this kingdom value. And then renewal of community. So that's the basic summary of the uh, evangelism training. If you want to come and hear more about it, come and share your ideas. So we want to serve other people. Maybe even we can build affordable housing here if they need a place to stay. So brothers and sisters, fear God and worship God. The psalmist says that they are established forever and ever to be performed with the faithfulness and of righteousness. He sent the redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. So we do all for the glory of God. It's not for our benefit. After everything is said and done, only God should be glorified. After everybody came yesterday and worked two hours in hot day and says glory to God. So brothers and sisters, may God bless all those sacrificial volunteers and ministers of God's kingdom. And may God bless all of you who come to worship God out of fear of God. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. And we know the fear of God is the beginning of our wisdom. And sometimes we lost fear and we lost wisdom. And we fell into temptations. And we start complaining and grumbling and become self-destroying. So Lord, have mercy on us and help us to restore your wisdom and fear of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, uh, I want to recognize some of the people who actually um, serve our church sacrificially during the pandemic times. Last Sunday, we recognized those people who worked in the worship team. Without them, we could not have online worship, but one year and five months, they continually provide online worship service so we can get together again. And whether you know it or not, trusty members, they check the church campus every day. They made this security check and walk around, make sure that all the doors are locked and make sure that the lawns are properly maintained 
and everything was kept clean. So I read uh, the thank you card for them, the names of them, and they can pick up the card at the end of the service. But if you are here, please stand quietly there. Matt Blazer, Sandy Blazer's son, Greg Bromley, our trusty chair, R. Carson, yes, he's here. And James Wakefield, he provided special service during the winter nights and when they lost their Wi-Fi, he quickly came to rescue them. Thank you. Sandy and Bob Blazer. You will hear many Blazers. <laughs> Blazer, whole Blazer family come to see if the church is standing there. Carol and Mike Curtis. Carol and Mike Curtis. You know, one of the things about them, they come every Thursday after the Thursday crew is not gathering anymore. And they just weeds out all the weeds and take care of the ground, the lawn and ground and do special checks. And Mark Kerr, our vice chair of the trustee, where is Mark? Yeah, there is Hawaii. Hawaii. <laughs> okay. <laughs> after, after all the work, now he needs vacation. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you. You may be seated now. Now we're going to do uh, joys and concerns. That's what we did at eight o'clock and nine o'clock service. So I have a number of prayer requests that if you didn't fill out a card and you have a joy or concern, could you just kind of like raise your hand and tell me and I'll try to get that included. Anybody? Okay, then. Oh, oh, Mary Beth. Okay, okay, good, thank you. Yes, go ahead. Oh my. Another birthday. We have a lot in July. Let me tell you. Uh, wait, wait till I have them all. Oh, I dropped half the prayer requests here. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Oh, Autumn has a birthday. Uh, the 28th, 29th. I've known you since you were born, and I still get the day wrong, Autumn. I, I keep getting older, and Karen will finally get it, okay? Okay, so the 29th, and you are in 16. Oh my God, I can drop 16 years just like that. Woo! Okay, anyone else? Oh, somebody in the back. Yeah, Joan. You know, you never know when God is speaking to you, sometimes in the quiet, or, or you get that nudge, uh, you need to call someone, or uh, you need to pray for them. So, yeah, God, God is amazing. So, any others before I read my list? No? We're good? Okay. Um, here we go. For prayer requests. Uh, I have a friend, my hairdresser, Rosie Neal. She works at Betsy's Salon. Uh, pray for her. Her son, Seth, who we prayed for last week, he did pass away. So uh, Rosie has now lost her husband and her two sons. So um, just pray for her. This is a really hard time. 
Um, Edie Rucker's grandson, Billy, we want to continue to pray for him. He was in the hospital this past week. So pray for a good recovery for him. Uh, my oldest grandson, Nathan, has a co-worker at UPS. His name is Nick. And Nick um, has had um, uh, complications from uh, COVID. Uh, he had the second vaccine, and then he got sick after the second vaccine. He's a 26-year-old healthy guy that's married with three kids. So just pray he is recovering. He's out of the hospital, uh, but still has not returned to work. Uh, I called some of, some of our church members, and I want to uh, send greetings to Catherine Hensley, Midge Sunston, Evelyn Thomas, Al Rash, Grace Beers, Peggy Lamana, just a few, let them know that we really miss you. Um, we have a prayer request. This is from our family, the Moronis family. A friend of ours, Dennis Hardy, who lives in uh, uh, Pennsylvania. Tomorrow morning, early, he is having a tumor removed from his pituitary gland. So we pray for a successful um, recovery from that surgery. Uh, from Jim McGuire, continue prayers for his eyes after uh, cataract surgery. Uh, prayers for Russ uh, Salyard, uh, uh, Rochelle's stepdad. He's starting dialysis, so hopefully I got the spelling right. Uh, this is from Jane. Uh, Kenny's son-in-law, Scott Robson, and his family, she wants prayers for them as they were traveling to LA for uh, Scott's stepbrother's funeral. And uh, Scott just met his his half brother several years ago, and they really connected, but he did pass away. So the family is traveling from Portland uh, down to LA for that service. Uh, prayers for um, safe camping trip on Tuesday and for healing for John's mom and Sharon. And um, that's from um, the Sergi family. Oh my, we have a birth. This is from Brian Nagaki. Birth of Louisa Sophia on Friday to Brian and Kelly Nagaki, new granddaughter of Brian and Carol. Wow, congratulations. New babies are so special. Our little great grandson Barrett is now three and a half months old. So it's exciting, exciting. A prayers from uh, Al Carlson and Leslie. Uh, several of them. The first one is from for Jonathan Carlson. He has an interview tomorrow. Looking for a career change, prayers for an interview that goes well and that it is the right uh, move for him. And then uh, prayer requests for Jonathan and Nea Carlson are expecting in January. Jonathan celebrates his birthday on the 29th. Uh, on Thursday the 15th, okay? I remember when Jonathan was born, I was working with his mom, so whew, all these babies. Now, we have a few more birthdays to celebrate. My daughter Janet turned 51 yesterday. Rob Blazer had a birthday yesterday. Wally Cressley had a birthday yesterday. And Gigi's daughter Evelyn turned four yesterday. So the 17th of July is quite a day. And Russ, we wish you a happy birthday this coming week. Autumn, you too, my sweetheart. And um, with that, and we have one more. This is from Eva. Uh, her granddaughter, Denise, passed the board. She is a registered nurse now. What an accomplishment. Does our society really need good nurses? So, um, Eva, wonderful. We were so happy for her. And then Pastor Lee wants us to keep in prayer uh, the Maldonado family. And um, we know the cares for that. So with that, we will give um, it to Pastor Lee. I add one more? Yes. Oh my goodness. So if you didn't understand, that was Bud Music has gone into the hospital for emergency treatment for Crohn's disease. Oh. 
Crohn's disease. I understand that can be extremely painful. So we keep God in our prayers too. Right. Because we are in the section, we can see happy birthday to all of us. People are born and grow among us, and we celebrate their birthdays together. And people grow and decide to serve the country in many different ways. And Denise passed the board exam, become registered nurse. And people find new jobs and find ways to serve you in many different ways. We celebrate their lives with them in you. But Lord, we also know that there are so many people who lost their beloved ones, who face challenges with the physical pains, and many people are facing surgeries, Especially when you lost your husband and two sons, we can hear the cry of the widow and the mom who want to say something but couldn't say. Lord, we cry out for her. Why? Why, Lord? How can I continue my life? In silence, we are waiting for your answers. Sometimes you give us nudge and a voice through different ways. But sometimes we are in this pitch black tunnel of which we do not know the end. So have mercy upon all of us. When we are waiting, help us to keep our fear of you and help us to continually trust you. We remember all the wonderful deeds that you have done for us. And we know that your great love saved us many times. So we come again once more before you and pray for our brothers and sisters who are going through those difficult times. Give us wisdom and help all of us to visit them, hold their hands, and pray with them so that they can walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. Use us as your staff and rod, O Lord, in your hand so that they can find still waters and green grasses. And make us all one in your love. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who taught us how to pray. Can say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's now time for our worship and for our ties and offerings.
God for your faith truth, your promise, and your provision. He has given us more than we need. So we bring something to share with our neighbors. Bless all those who give generously, and bless all those who could not give any offering money because they are poor. And bless all of us to share one more our time and talent and treasure and our sacrifice as your people. And help us to live together as one party in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please join us now in our closing hymn, What Does the Lord Require of You? of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our God and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all who fear God and continually serve our neighbors and use our time and talent and treasure with the faith in victory in Jesus ever and forever. Amen. Amen.